Hello everyone, this is Henny again and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to start the third lecture of MATLAB for beginners. Today I'm going to discuss with you the functions in MATLAB and how to write functions in four simple steps. So let's get started. Let's first define what a function is. A function in programming is some kind of structure. This structure takes inputs from the user or the caller and basically uh, the caller of the function or the user do not know anything about the body of the function, how it's written. Only the one that wrote this function understands how this function works from inside. But the caller of the function only knows about how it looks like from outside. The caller does not really care about how it works from inside or uh, about how its body looks like. Uh, there are many examples in our daily life. Let's take, uh, for example, the power button example. When you look at the power button here from outside, you will see a very neat structure. You will not see the complexities inside. Now, this power button takes an input when you press it. And this input is being processed and the device is turned it on or turned it off. This is exactly how functions in MATLAB work. For a function in MATLAB, it takes input, processes the input, and generates output. And from outside, it's very neat. You cannot see the complexities. So, an example for a function that you use without seeing its complexities, the square root function. For the square root function, you just call it with its name. This is similar to the interface, the nice and neat interface. And this function takes input and returns an output. So the square root of four is two, and this is going to be the output. This output is then stored in X. Another example, when you have Y assigned the value 10, and then you try to get the log of Y. So when you call the log of Y, you are just calling a function that someone created before. So this function has some complexities inside, but it takes an input and this input is 10 because y contains 10 and it processes this input and generates an output. And this output is going to be the value of the log and this value is then stored in that. In MATLAB, when we want to create a function or write a function, we have to write it this way. So first we have to use the reserved keyword function and then we open square bracket and close it. And in between here we have the list of outputs and then we have the equal sign and then we have the function name. The function name is not a reserved keyword. So you call it whatever you want, but you have to name your file with the same name, right? So we can call it here, for example, my function. And then we open a bracket, close it, and in between the brackets, we have the list of arguments or the list of parameters, or we call them here the list of inputs. At the end, we have to end it with the keyword end. So now, function and end are reserved keywords, and you have to write them in this way. What we may change is the list of output, the list of input, and the function name. So this is how we write a function in MATLAB. We are going to move into the practical part now. So now we have MATLAB and let's start with the four simple steps for writing a function. So let's start with the first step. The first step is to uh, right click here in the current folder window and then choose new function and then give it a name. When you give it a name, try to avoid using a name for the function that is similar to a built-in function. For example, we know that there is a function for the square root SQRT. Try not to use this name for your function. Uh, this is going to cause conflict when you have other codes trying to call the original built-in SQRT function, but instead it's going to call your function. So try to avoid this. How could you avoid this? Uh, maybe you can add a prefix or a suffix to your function name. For example, we could say my and then sqrt, right? The good thing about MATLAB is that when you open it now, 
you will see that it generated a simple code for you and here we are having our second step the second step here is to choose the list of input and the list of output function and end we can never change them why because function the word function and the word end are reserved keywords and they must be here it's part of the syntax of matlab we have to have them this way also the equal symbol we have to have it this way what we could change is the code here i'm going to remove it and the list of arguments or input and the list of output so the second step is to modify the inputs and the outputs so if we are going to compute the square root we know that we are going to compute the square root for only one input this input i'm going to name it x for now and what about the output the output is going to be one number and this number is the square root of the input x right so we can have it in the bracket just like this as being a vector but we know from the previous lecture that we can omit the square bracket if our variable is one dimensional that is if the output here is only one output we don't have to have brackets we can just say y right so this is the second step so again first step is to create a file for the function name second step after we open the file is to change the parameters or the inputs and the outputs. Now, the third step is to write our code. So here we can write any code we want. And this code is going to run. And at the end, we have to have a value for y because this is going to be our output. So first, let's see how we could compute the square root of x. Square root of x could be computed in a very simple way we could just say x to the power 0.5 so this is the value of the square root of x this is going to be evaluated as a square root of x and then we want to store it in a variable this variable is going to be our output therefore we should write y assigned x to the power 0.5 right it's one line of code and we could here write some comments to document our function so how could we write a comment here we just have the percentage symbol or sign and then we start writing so we could say this function computes the square root of the input now we've written the body of our function and this is the third step the fourth step is to save our file now what is left is just to test our function so how we test our function to test our function we can just close this here go to the command window and write the function name my sqrt and then open the bracket and add a number let's say 4 and we know that the square root of 4 is 2 so let's hit enter we have ants as 2 that means that our function works fine the number 4 here when added after the bracket when we call the function is called an argument parameter or an input now when we open the function body here and we compare this name with this name and the bracket with the bracket we see that in a state of x here we have 4 it means that the number 4 here replaced x so what happens is that when you call the function this way my sqrt and you give it a parameter 4 this number 4 is being passed as a parameter to the function body and we and we would call this parameter x now whatever x whatever the value of x in our example is going to be 4 is going to be taken and this operation is going to be applied so we are going to take x which is now 4 and have and have its power to 0 0.5 or half and this gives us the square root of 
x which is 4 and this square root is evaluated to 2 and this number is being stored in the variable y so after we call this function we have a value for the whole function stored in the output y so the result of this call is 2 right so when we call it this way it's evaluated to the number 2 and from the previous lecture if you remember whenever you call a function like this and you do not have an assignment to a variable a temporary variable is created for you and it's named ants and the value of the function is assigned to this variable ants and we can see this here okay now we can call my my sqrt again but assign it to another variable so we could say uh, let's say zeb assigned my s your rt of 9 hit enter it's 3 so it's right and then we can see now that the variable z contains 3 again my sqrt my sqrt is called and then you pass a parameter 9 and this 9 is going to replace the input x here so whenever you have x here you replace it with 9 so 9 to the power 0 0.5 is going to give me 3 and this tree is going to be stored in y, the output. So the call of this function is going to generate an output, which is evaluated to three. We need to store it in a variable and we name this variable z. And that's it. This is how you can, this is how you write a function and call it. Now MATLAB has lots, lots of built-in functions and functions that other people created. So you don't really need to write everything as a function you just need to know if matlab has this function or not for example if you want a square root in matlab it's sqrt and then you give it the value let's say 25 so it's 5 right um also there is a function log of 10 so it's 2.3 the cosine and sine functions so you could say cosine of pi it's minus one and then sine of pi so when you work with matlab you should expect to work with functions you, you should expect to call them a lot right and there are many there are many built-in functions uh, so you just need to call them otherwise if you don't have the functions that you want you can just create it or write it and as i mentioned there are four simple steps to write a function so let me just clear clc then close this function and then let's write a very simple function that takes two numbers and outputs the summation of these two numbers and the product of these two numbers so let's create another function here and i'm going to call it uh and i'm going to call it add underscore multiply Right? And then let, let me open it. Then I have the body created for me. I'm going to delete it. Now the first, now the second step is to modify the arguments or the input and modify the output. Okay. Now what I want, I want two inputs. So I'm going to call them x1, x2. I can call them x and y, x, y, z, whatever. So the names of the input do not really matter. Okay, and what about the output? I want two numbers, the sum and the product. So the first number is going to be um, y1 and the second is going to be y2. You can name it sum and uh, product, right? So we can state, we can state, right, sum and product, right? You can see here that we have, uh, we have x1, x2 underlined and sum and product also uh, are underlined so if you hover over them you can see that for the sum it's written the function return value sum might be unset it means that in this code here that you're going to write you haven't yet um, created the output or modified the output right same for x1 this variable is not being used in the code so once you start writing the code you are not going to see the underlined we can have uh, some comments here we can say this function so sum equals to or assigned uh, x1 
plus x2 right and what about the product product is x1 times x2 and that's it now let's finish up with saving okay and then we call the function so we can call the function with any two numbers we create variables in which we store the output uh, values coming from the function add multiply so we know that we are going to have two values so we can create two variables we can say x and y assigned what add underscore multiply right and then we could have any two arguments those could be any numbers so let's say we want to add a multiply number two and number three right so x is going to be matched with what with sum and y is going to be matched with product and two is going to be matched with x1 and three is going to be matched with x2 i'm going to take two and three x1 x2 and do the first operation so the first operation is to add them x1 x2 that means two is going to be added to three here and the result is going to be stored in the sum and what is the sum here is going to be x right and then two again two and three are going to be used here multiplying two by three is going to be six and the result is going to be stored in product and what is product as we matched is y right so let's run this and see so yes x is five two plus three and y is six now what if i want to store the first output only we can create only one variable so we can say z assigned add multiply and then give it two numbers four and five right so z becomes four plus five so if you want to compare the uh, list of inputs and outputs four is going to be compared to x1 and five is x2 and then for the output we have only one output so it's going to be the first one so z is going to be sum and what about product we don't have it so that's going to be nine now what if i want to have only the product but not the sum if i want to do that i should write it this way open the square bracket and add the sample here and write let's say um any variable let's let's call it uh, m right add multiply and then four and five right so now m is 20 and that that is um four times five again if we compare four is going to be compared to x1 and five is going to be compared to x2 so x1 times x x1 plus x2 is here but we do not use it right and x1 times x2 is going to be the product and is compared to m this sample here means that we are excluding this output so it's compared to sum so that means we are excluding sum and m as compared to product so this is mainly how to create a function what comes next is how to make the body of this function complicated enough to have more meaningful functions that's it for this lecture i hope you enjoyed it and uh, i hope to see you next time if you like the content of this lecture please share it and subscribe also, if you have any question, please do not hesitate to uh, write them in the comments. Thanks again for watching and hope to see you next time.